Good morning, family. The Bible declares in Psalms 24 and 1 that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. So I just stopped by this morning to give you a little bit of encouragement by reminding you who you belong to. I pray on this morning that you enjoy the worship service. Hello, citizens of the kingdom, and welcome to Mount Calvary International Worship Center's live stream. We're so excited to spend this time with you and we anticipate an encounter with God like never before, right where you're viewing us from. Get the family together and let's get ready to hear and receive a word from God as a family. Because we are a fellowship of believers, why don't you take this time to share and invite others to join in with us. But just before we head into today's service, here's some important information we'd like to share with you. On next Sunday, May 24th, our youth ministry will present the New Generation Kingdom Kids Zone, a special time of worship interaction for those of worship child care age and elementary school ages. The presentation will take place immediately following our virtual worship service on our very own Mount Calvary International YouTube channel, our church's website, and media platforms. It will be a time of exciting impact for all of our young children. We are directed by scripture to be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Therefore, please remain prayerful with our apostle and faithful to our virtual worship experience as we will continually position ourselves as people of faith and wisdom. Our return to public gathering will be based on our steps being ordered by our Lord. Therefore, stay in faith, stay focused, and most of all, stay connected. Attention all 2020 graduates. Be certain to contact our church's administrative office by Tuesday, May 19th for special instructions concerning our plans to salute you in your accomplishments. You can do so by calling the office at 504-340-7777 Monday and Tuesday between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 o'clock p.m. Please adhere to the aforementioned announcements and stay connected with the MCI family for the latest news and ministry updates. Now, let's go into today's service. Well, praise the Lord again and kingdom blessings to each and every one of you. Welcome again to the Mount Calvary International Worship Center Sunday morning virtual worship experience. We are so excited about this day that the Lord has made and having the privilege of rejoicing and being glad in it. We're about to get right into the word on this morning. But right before we do, I want to encourage you in this day and this time in this season. We all know already that our governor uh, made the declaration on this past Friday, our uh, city, uh, New Orleans and the state, Louisiana, our parish Jefferson as a part of this state. And of course, we understand now that um, there are many businesses and many public uh, areas that are now reopened in phase one to, uh, of course, a part of their uh, capacity. However, we must know that our steps are ordered by the Lord. And so, yes, we are careful that our steps are never ordered by our passion, not by other people, not by need for provision or popularity, that the steps of a good man, the steps of a good woman are ordered by the Lord. So with that being said, remain in prayer with us. We're praying every day that our movement is in sync and in timing with what God wants. God has been meeting us tremendously here. We will at one point, we'll be back together with our time of gathering as the Fellowship of Believers on Sunday in the worship center. And at the same time, this um, uh, mode of ministry through the virtual worship experience, we're actually going to be taking this to the next level because this all, this will also remain, but we are excited about the fact that we understand that we cannot be moved by any other voice other than the voice of the Lord. So as your pastor and your apostle, pray continually with me, even in this season, that we will, our timing will be also God's timing. Your health and the health of our community is more important than anything else. And we understand now, after two months of worshiping God together, that the power of God is not limited to any geographical location. While the local uh, place of fellowship is important and will always be important, we understand that he's not locked into any place because the Lord is meeting you even this morning. And so we will keep you abreast 
Uh, but we want you to stay tuned right here. We want you to continually uh, be here with us, connecting with us. And we praise God for every church and every pastor and whatever God is telling them, we highly respect. But we're going to follow whatever the Lord is telling us. And right now, for this season right here, in phase one, God is telling us to remain uh, still remain still. We're going to be adding more to our worship experience, to our virtual worship experience in the coming weeks. And we will let you know when the doors, uh, of course, of the physical location of our worship center are open for those to begin to attend. And so listen, God is so great and he's so awesome because everything that we go through, we learn something through it. And we're grateful right now for how the Lord has ministered to all of us even in this season. Well, if you're ready for the word of the Lord, I believe the word is ready for you on today. Let's pray about this moment. Let's pray about the word and let's get in. Join me if you will. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we love, honor, and adore you. Father, we're so grateful for this morning, this brand new day with brand new mercies. Oh God, we thank you. Your faithfulness is great. Because of your compassion that fail is not, Father, we thank you right now, dear God, that your mercies are new even today. So for that, we want to say thank you. Now, God, we're grateful, dear God, for, uh, Lord, how it is that your hand is continually over us. You're keeping us even in the midst of a, a challenging uh, time in this pandemic. Lord, we've been kept by your power. And God, on this morning, we praise you and we honor you for who you are. You are God and you're God all by yourself. So, Father, we pray this morning continually, Father, for our, dear God, our uh, leaders, Father. We pray for our government, our national government, state government, parish government. And, Father, we thank you right now that you have the final word and the final say over all things. Father, we pray for your people, that every person, dear God, will literally walk in wisdom and apply wisdom and God, we thank you right now, Lord, that we understand that wisdom is the principal thing. And you said, if any man lack wisdom, I ask you. So, Father, thank you, Lord, that we are seeking you in this season like never before. We pray this morning, Father, for every man or woman of God that have the responsibility of leading others, Father. And we thank you right now that you're guiding them according to your will, purpose, and plan for their assignment and their ministry. And, God, we thank you right now that you shall be glorified. Now, God, as we approach your word today, we thank you for the revelation that's headed in our direction and the application of your word because we understand it is not the hearers that are blessed, but it is the doers who are blessed. And we shall, dear God, follow your word, apply it to our lives, grow, develop, and walk in you. We give you thanks for all things now. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. Well, family, let's get in on this morning. Grab your Bibles, if you will, and turn with me uh, to Philippians chapter number four. Philippians chapter number four, and we'll begin reading at verse number four. Philippians four, and begin reading at verse number four, and it reads this way. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the word of the Lord is blessed on today. For our learning and our development this morning, I would just like to speak from the thought or the subject, if you will, this morning. I want to talk about kingdom keys for handling disappointment. Kingdom keys for handling disappointment. Brothers and sisters, please know without a doubt that none of us are so spiritual until things don't move us. All of us are subject to things that catch us by surprise, catch us off guard, causing us for a moment to literally be stilled in our steps because it is something that we did not expect, something that we did not anticipate at all, and it literally catches us at a place where it uh, literally startles us for a moment. And please know it is a disappointing moment for us. But without a doubt, we must know that disappointments 
or not supposed to overwhelm the believer because when it comes down to disappointment, we are kingdom citizens and every kingdom citizen has been given the keys to the kingdom, which is that which is bound, bound on earth is also bound in heaven and that which is loosed on earth by us is loose in heaven. And so this is what Jesus told the disciples after okay, Simon, whose name was changed to Peter, according to Matthew chapter 19, after he spoke up when the question was asked, who do you say I am? And he said that thou art the Christ. And Jesus told him, because of his confession, every person that would confess the same way he did, that uh, he would build them as the ecclesia, the called out ones. And then he says, on top of that, I will give unto them the keys to the kingdom. And we now have the keys. We have the answer. And while disappointment will still come our way, we handle disappointment as kingdom citizens based upon the keys of the kingdom that we now have. And so when we consider here this passage, Paul writes now to these uh, Philippian uh, believers from a Roman jail. And as Paul is writing here, he's encouraging the believers there in Philippi because they've been under great challenge. They've watched their leader, Paul now, who's been now uh, jailed for preaching the gospel, for preaching Jesus Christ. And Paul now, he shares with them even in the early part of this particular book, he tells them about his, his chains and his trouble and how it is that it has even worked out for the furthering of the gospel. Paul goes on throughout all of this book of Philippians, encouraging the believers. And then when he gets to chapter number four, he starts out by telling them that there were two uh, females who were instrumental in his ministry that they needed to be reconciled. And then Paul tells them, listen, over and over again throughout this entire book, Paul is encouraging them to deal with every challenging moment and how to handle the challenges because he's literally ministering to them how they should conduct themselves as citizens of the kingdom and as believers who are established in Jesus Christ. And so now after he tells them in the beginning of chapter four, where we are on this morning about reconciling these two uh, uh, females that were instrumental in this ministry, in verse number four, Paul now, he shifts and he begins to tell them about their attitude and their focus. And in verse number four, he starts off by telling them, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He starts out here because he's working with them and he's working on them concerning what their minds have been and what their mindsets have been, should I say, uh, about this journey because they, they, they're, they're talking to Paul through a letter or they're conversating with Paul through a letter from a Roman jail. And Paul has already told them things are not as bad as it looks to the natural eye because God is at work even when things look bad. I don't know who that's for this morning, but somebody needs to know that even when things are not favorable from a natural perspective, perspective you better know that God is still at work. And so here it is, he's showing them how to handle disappointment. And just as Paul ministered to them, he's ministering to us through the word of God by way of Holy Spirit this morning uh, about these kingdom keys in handling disappointment. And so as Paul now breaks this down to them and as Holy Spirit is teaching us this morning, here's key number one. As kingdom citizens, here it is, if we're going to handle disappointment, number one, we must establish a consistent view of God's power. Establish a consistent view of God's power. This is the way Paul said it again in verse number four. He says here, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Paul now literally tells him, he says, listen, have such a view of God's power until every person that meets you, they will see you with one disposition. And that is a disposition of rejoicing. It's such a, listen, a confidence in God's power that your praise is consistent. Your praise is not based upon favorable circumstances, but you still have a thank you, Jesus, even in the face of disappointment. Here's how you handle that as, as a kingdom citizen. Here it is. If God allows me to be disappointed, he's just set the stage 
for his glory to shine through me because he wants somebody to walk in the earth and declare that he's still good even when disappointment shows up. I want to ask you a question this morning. Do you still have your praise when you're disappointed? Or, or, or are you the one that as soon as things go bad, your, your hands are not up anymore and your mouth is in uh, quiet because, you know, uh, situations must be uh, conducive for you to give God praise. But a real believer uh, has a view of God's power and that we rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. It's, uh, listen, it is, it is always been intriguing why did Paul says rejoice in the Lord always. And then again, I say rejoice. He literally emphasizes the fact that don't forget your praise. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to have a hallelujah on your lips. Praise God when you feel like it and praise him when you don't. Because your moderation, your gentleness to every person ought to be that the Lord is at hand. What does that mean? The Lord is right on the scene with me. And because the Lord is at hand, he is working out something already on my behalf. I wish somebody this morning that's in worship with me right now begin to give God praise for your challenge. Because you know for yourself, the Lord is at hand. So here it is. As kingdom citizens, we must handle disappointments by number one, establishing a consistent view of God's power. But number two, here's how we handle it. Here it is. We must confidently embrace challenging moments. Confidently embrace challenging moments. He goes on, listen, in verse number five, he says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. He goes on and said, listen, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. We must with confidence embrace challenging moments. See, this whole part of being anxious, anxiety, anxiety brings about a spirit of overwhelm. And I want you to know that overwhelm is not of God. That if we're so anxious for something, oh, we're overwhelmed, we're, we're at the point where we're in now, we can't even rest, can't even sleep at night because this is on our mind. And the Bible says right here to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, listen, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. He says this, he, he, he helps us here. He says, he says, chill out. In the midst of it, confidently embrace challenging moments. In other words, when moments of challenges come, you have to look at your challenge like David looked at Goliath and say to that challenge, just like David said to Goliath, the same God that gave me victory, as David said, over the lion and the bear will also give me victory over an uncircumcised Philistine. You've got to know without a doubt right now. When it comes down to handling disappointment as believers, we must first of all, number one, establish a consistent view of God's power. Then number two, we must consist, listen, confidently embrace challenging moments. But then here it is. Number three, we must learn to pray to and praise the one who is able to handle the situation. He goes on. He says, write this. He says this. He says this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. It's interesting here because Paul is telling them, he says, you know, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. When the Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing, pray about everything. Life wants to make us, listen, anxious about everything and pray about nothing. But that's not what the Bible says, kingdom citizens. You and I, we must be anxious for nothing and in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make our request known unto God. How do we do this? Please understand prayer. When we pray about everything, we position ourselves for God to walk in it with us. Yeah. See, whenever we pray about something, God now, he's right there with us and he will walk in it with us. We can go through some stuff when we know God is walking with us. The psalmist said it like this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear evil. Why? Because I'm not walking by myself. Thou art with me. So since God is with me, I can walk through this moment. 
I want somebody to know this today that, listen, you can go through whatever you're going through because you're not going through by yourself when you know the shepherd, when you know God is with you. So watch this. We must, we must, when we pray about something, we actually position ourselves for God to walk with us now. But understand this. He says, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. With thanksgiving, we must make certain that we pray in line with what the words, the way the word says we ought to pray. We cannot pray trying to tell God all about our problems. God does not need us to tell, tell him about our problems. He already knows about our problems. But God wants to see if we know his word so that we will stand on his word and make a withdrawal in the spirit by lifting up his word, giving voice to his word in the midst of our atmosphere. When we pray, listen, with thanksgiving, we make our requests known unto God. So when we pray, we pray thanking God for what he's already said. I don't have to go and pray to God, Lord, heal me if it's your will. But no, when I pray, I must pray to God saying, God, I thank you that according to your word, that healing is mine. Are y'all getting this this morning? And it's important that we understand that we must, here it is, we must pray to and praise the one who's able to handle the situation. So listen, here it is. We must, we must handle this appointment different from everybody else, different than everybody else. Here we go. Number one, establish a consistent view of God's power. Number two, Confidently embrace challenging moments. Number three, pray to and praise the one who's able to handle every situation. And then number four, place the responsibility of timing, listen, in God's hands. He says this, if you do it that way, if, you, if, if, if you're anxious for nothing, everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. He says, you're going to release that thing up for you. And you're going to place it in his hands. And you know what's going to happen? And the peace of God. <laughs> See, when it's placed in God's hand, he takes the weight away. He takes the load away. He takes the heaviness away. He takes the restlessness away. Because, watch this, we place the responsibility of timing in God's hand. Because God's timing is perfect. In other words, I can't be watching my clock waiting for it to be over. I've got to trust him that he's got this thing. And because he has it. I can trust this timing. Place the responsibility of timing in God's hand, saints. And when we do so, he says, and the peace that surpasses our understanding will keep, will keep or guard both our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Look how God operates. He says, I will keep your heart and your mind. He says, watch this. I will keep you together emotionally. I will keep you together spiritually and watch this. And I do so because I'm going to condition your mind that you won't even be thinking out of sync or you, you won't even be thinking, you know, thoughts that are so contrary to what I've already said. This is how kingdom citizens handle disappointments. And so as I get ready to close today, how do we handle disappointments? We have the keys to the kingdom, y'all. Number one, establish a consistent view of God's power. Number two, competently embrace challenging moments. Number three, pray to, uh, pray to and praise the one who's able to handle the situation. Number four, uh, listen, uh -huh, place the responsibility of timing in God's hands. And then number five, paint a picture of your prosperous future on the canvas of your mind. That's what your mind is. Your mind is a canvas and you are a painter. And a painter can takes a canvas and literally, watch this, brings to manifestation through his ability that which he conceptualized. If you can right now see your life as God sees it, see your future as God see it, and not allow your mind to paint some picture of disaster or some picture of failing, but allow your mind to paint the picture in line with what God has already said about you. And as I close here, I want to just read verse number eight. As Paul tells them, God speaks to you and I this morning. He says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, 
And if there be anything praiseworthy, he says, meditate, O God, on these things. In other words, he says, watch this, paint a picture on the canvas of your mind and allow that to be your counseling moment, your moment of comfort, your reminder of what God has already said. And so now when disappointment comes, no longer should you fall apart at the, come apart at the seams. No longer should you get ready to quit or surrender. But as a kingdom citizen, you ought to handle disappointment because you have the keys to the kingdom. And here they are. How, how do kingdom citizens handle disappointment? Number one, again, we establish a consistent view of God's power. Number two, we competently embrace challenging moments. Yeah, challenge. We, we, you're here, but here it is. I will not end in defeat. I'm going to win. Number three, we pray to and we praise the one who's able to handle the situation. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a, with thanksgiving, listen, here it is, we, 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 with thanksgiving, we tell God, thank you for what you said, and I take claim on what's already mine. Then number four, listen, here it is, we place the responsibility of timing in God's hands. He's got this thing in time. I don't have to watch the clock. I don't have to be worried about how long it's been because he's got, he has me covered. And then number five, we must paint a picture of, listen, of our prosperous future on the canvas of our imagination. How do you see yourself in your future? Can you see yourself walking in divine healing, in prosperity, walking in peace, walking, you know, being productive, walking uh, out of your time of a challenge and walking into your deliverance? You've got to paint that picture on your mind by, by watch this, by thinking on the right things. You can't think on everything. You can't think on bad stuff, but you got to think on the things that are true, the things that are noble, the things that are just, the things that are pure, the things that are lovely, that be any virtue. I mean, every goodness, here it is, everything that's good, that's what you want to think about. That be any praise, anything that, that God gets glory out, think about that. And he says, meditate on it. To meditate on it, watch this, is to, watch this, is to think about it. And when you finish, think about it some more. And when you finish, think about it again. And you meditate on it. And you meditate on it because whatever we meditate on, we become. <laughs> Somebody needs to know today, this is the way kingdom citizens handle disappointments. So right now, can you agree with me right now that your days of falling apart are over? That even though you will get uh, perhaps a disappointing phone call, situation, or circumstance, but you have the keys to the kingdom now. And because you have the keys to the kingdom, you know whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. I hope you've been blessed today, because this is the way kingdom citizens handle disappointments. Well, beloved, on today, those of you that are viewing, I want you to get ready today, those of you that have never accepted Jesus Christ. Here it is. It starts, first of all, with acknowledging that you need him in your life. And if that's you right there in the home, perhaps watching with your friend, watching with your family, somebody invited you, one of your friends swiped an invite, and this is the word that you needed today, and the Lord is speaking to you. I want you to let him in today. If you let him in, he will come in, and he will literally be the God of your life. If that's you right there in your home, wherever you are, lift your hands to the Lord as a sign of surrender. And as you surrender to the Lord, listen, don't try to fix nothing. You don't have to fix anything. His word will do the work if you trust him today. So today, my brother, my sister, I want you to get ready. I'm about to pray for you. And secondly, I want to pray for you, my brother, my sister, who once was walking with the Lord, but you strayed away from him. And today you're rededicating your life to him. I want to pray with you today. So let's do it right now. Lift your hands. You, my brother, my sister, that's been in a backslidden state, doing your own thing, but you're sick and tired. And today you say, Lord, I surrender. Lift your hand right to him right now. He's meeting you right there where you are. Let's pray about it, both of you, both my brother and my sister that's accepting Christ and my brother and my sister that's rededicating your heart. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you today. These are your sons and your daughters. And for those that lifted their hands to you, surrendering their life, 
God, thank you for the one that's accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for the very first time. And Lord, thank you for the one that's rededicating his or her life to you. And Father, you promised in your word that any person that will call upon you, that dear God, if we call upon you, we shall be saved. And you said, dear God, if we confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Thank you for my brother. Thank you for my sister. Thank you right now that life change comes to them today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Listen, right where you are, everyone join me now in this prayer of repentance. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you now. I acknowledge Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you raised Jesus from the dead just for me, creating me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Lord, I promise to serve and follow you for the rest of my life. And today, I claim the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Now listen, every one of you that prayed that prayer for the very first time, you're just born again. I want you to call right now. There are individuals in the call center waiting on your call. They're going to pray with you and they're going to get some information from you. And we're going to begin this journey together. And when you do, Listen, you have a call from me this week, encouraging you in your journey and helping you to walk forth in your decision. I want you to call right now. Operators are waiting. 504-340-7777. Somebody's waiting for your call. Call right now. Hallelujah. Well, saints, let's give God thanks today for every person and every decision that is made on today. Now listen, we're getting ready uh, to give in just a moment, but just before we do, there are just a few observations I want to share with you. Remember, as I open on today, this is where we're going to be. Be right here for our virtual worship service this coming Wednesday. This coming Wednesday, uh, of course, on our church website, as well as our YouTube channel, and as well as, of course, our social media platforms, we want to meet you here this Wednesday for our Word Up Wednesday. And then on next Sunday, we'll be right here, amen, with another powerful time in the Word. Next Sunday is going to be an exciting day because right as soon as we finish our time, we're having, of course, something uh, on that day. We'll be sharing with our uh, young children, those from the Worship Child Care and Elementary School. We're grateful for Kingdom Kids Zone, and we know without a doubt that this new generation, Kingdom Kids Zone, we're grateful for Sister Brenda Brew, we're grateful uh, today for Sister Elaine Coleman, uh, Sister Vanessa Pierre, Sister Tanya, uh, and all of those who are making a difference in the life of our young people. And our young people will be sharing many of their gifts and talents right here on our church's broadcast next Sunday. We're having Kids Corner right following our morning worship service and be a special message for our young children as well as our teens, the lit generation. They are moving forward, living in truth, and we're excited about that. And so we want you to get ready for that. There's information uh, we need uh, to get some of the videos in from our young people, and so you'll be hearing from our youth leaders uh, on today. You can call the office for more information as it pertains to that. On behalf of the elect lady, Lady Gullet, she wants me to share with each and every one of you how, of course, uh, of, of how much of a humbling experience and how grateful she, uh, she felt and still yet shares her heart of gratitude concerning each and every one of you that expressed Amen. Kinds, uh, I mean, kind acts of love uh, to her as your spiritual covering, and of course, the spiritual mother of the house, and certainly uh, on Mother's Day. And she wants you to know how much she really appreciates that. And God, may God continually bless each and every one of you that sowed good seed and good ground by being a blessing to the elect lady on last week. Also, to each and every one of you that, of course, was such a blessing in our blessing homes on last week, some 50 plus households were touched by our ministry with wonderful baskets of groceries in our time of giveaway on last week. We are here to make a difference, and it is great people that make great, of course, 
fellowships of worship. And because you are a part of this great fellowship, as we shared together with all of those on last week, it was you touching them with us. And so for that, we want to say thank you. Now listen, graduates, we're coming down to the wire. We need you to contact the church this week right away. Monday and Tuesday because we have some important information to get to you so we can celebrate you and your accomplishments as a graduate. Now the last thing I want to share before we give and then we will all of course uh, get ready to move forward. I want many of you, many of you have uh, already shared, uh, shared with the altar uh, of course and uh, we have uh, the pictures there on the altar of so many of you. God gave us this vision to be able to just agree together. Uh, I've been walking through, even before doing this, uh, be, be earlier um, uh, uh, this morning, I shared together and uh, of course walked through the sanctuary, laying my hands on those pictures and giving God thanks for you and your family. Our intercessors along with myself, we're praying for the family of our ministry, but we're praying for families everywhere. Send those pictures in. I want to be able to walk by there and listen, I pick them up and you know, and of course, you know, I hold them in my hand because they were printed here and we we'll still do it with gloves, but we hold those pictures in our hand. I want to be able, if you don't have a picture in here today, listen, I, I want to be able to reach down there and get a picture of your family. Hold it in my hand and declare God's power and blessings over them. But I cannot do it if you haven't set yours in. We have so many that's already there, but yours, perhaps your picture is mentioned. If you have not yet sent that picture in, take that picture as soon as this broadcast is over. And all you got to do is then email it to connect at mciworshipcenter.org. And listen, it's already done. It's not, nothing complicated. Take a headshot selfie, okay? Put your name and your email address on the back of it, okay? And then email it to connect at mciworshipcenter.org uh, so we can have you there while we're praying. It's so powerful because it connects us as a family. So excited about what God's doing and God is certainly grateful. Well, let's get ready to give. The tithe is holy unto the Lord. A liberal offering to the liberal soul shall be made fat. And here at Mount Calvary and then whatever seed God puts on your heart to sow into the life of Lady Gullage and I. We thank you that we promise to always be good ground for every seed sown. Now listen, you can give again in several ways. Text to give, text MCI giving to 54244 or you can go to the Givelify app find Mount Calvary International Worship Center, you can go on our website at www.mciworshipcenter.org. You can give or you can mail your gift in 1600 Westwood Drive in Marrero 70072. And if you just want to take a little ride this morning, you can leave as soon as we finish the broadcast and until 1130 a.m. there will be somebody there waiting to receive your gift on today because we want to make certain that we man our stewardship as believers as we walk with the Lord all together. Well, today has been a blessed day. Remember, we have the keys to the kingdom and there's a way that believers, kingdom citizens, we handle disappointment. And so watch this. The next time disappointment comes knocking, tell disappointment, since you're here, I want you to know one thing. I know how to handle you. Until we meet again this Wednesday, may God bless you, may God keep you. We're praying for you today. Here are ways to continue to exercise faithful and stewardship giving. Text MCI Giving to 54244. Go to www.mciworshipcenter.org. Click Give Online at the top of the homepage. You can also go to the Fellowship One Go app. Click Give. You can also go to Givelify, search Mount Calvary International Worship Center, or mail your gifts into 1600 Westwood Drive, Marrero, Louisiana, 772. For all first-time users and detailed information for any of the listed ways to give, call the office at 504-340-7777. You can still contact the administrative office by calling 504 504- 340-7777 Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. For after-hours emergencies, call 504-919-8051.